Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Steve Deitch. Good morning, so everybody. How's everybody doing? So we've been sitting here for about an hour and 15 minutes. Why doesn't just everybody get a stand up for two seconds and take a stretch before I start? All right, now sit down. <laughs> so um, I have one question. How many people are native Boston, Bostonians here? It's a pretty big. So uh, are you as shocked as I am around the Celtics? 2-0. So I don't say that lightly. I honestly hope that the Celtics come back against the Heat and reach the NBA Finals. And the reason why I don't say that lightly is I grew up in Los Angeles, uh, and I am a Laker fan, and I am just as, I'm not worried about the Lakers at this point. They like to create, it's all Hollywood drama, but the NBA Finals is never the same unless the Celtics are playing the Lakers. So let's hope that that happens and we're all, all happy, and then the Lakers take them in four. <laughs> so, super happy to be here. Um, I'm gonna try and demystify the cloud. Uh, I think there's a lot of complexity out there still, and for folks in the room, I think we're fairly technical, uh, and we understand a lot of the nuances, but there are a lot of people out there that are just very, very confused. Um, you talk to customers all the time, and they have, have not plotted even the starting point of their strategy or their path down the cloud. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that, about what we're thinking from a Hewlett Packard perspective, uh, what we're doing from an actual cloud perspective, and how we're working with Red Hat very tightly, uh, and, and pushing the idea of giving customers choice and flexibility. Um, and then giving you a little prescription and direction as we go forward. Go forward. So, um, I don't think it comes to as a shock to anybody that business is running super fast right now, running much faster than IT, um, to a point where many IT professionals out there, including CIOs, are saying they're losing control. Um, and what's happening is business is saying, hey, I gotta move super fast, I gotta drive revenue growth, I've gotta accelerate my business processes, and I need a whole lot more business flexibility, particularly on the financial side. And what's happening is that the business users have seen the cloud and they like what they see. In our estimates, the business users are adopting the cloud five times faster than what IT estimated. So everybody hears all the urban legends about people using their credit cards and going out and getting applications by the drink and so forth. It's true. It's happening. This, as we like to say, this is not a fad, as many people previous to me have said, or a trend, or on the Gartner hype curve, or whatever. This is a secular trend that is happening right now. IT is standing there saying, I understand the value of the cloud as well, but I've got issues looking back at what I'm being tasked to do and maintaining all of the stringent requirements that I've been tasked to maintain, including security, as you see there, as being one of the top issues that are associated with moving to the cloud. Am I gonna get the same performance and availability and be able to maintain the same SLAs to the business? Uh, can I manage this, this monster, not only my private cloud, my public cloud, and my traditional IT without driving myself bananas? And finally, I don't want to get stuck with somebody. Because I'd characterize the cloud right now as in chapter zero. And we don't know, I think I know who's gonna win. But a lot of people out there don't know. And they're very, very afraid of getting locked into something. So they want choice and flexibility. Now, another thing to remember right now is every customer is not created equal. Every customer finds themselves at a different level of maturity. And if I had really long arms, but I put it out there, and if you look off to the left here, you can see it on the chart. There are many customers that are still trying to figure out how to virtualize, or even, even standardize and consolidate their data center environments. And then there are customers that are moving along this spectrum as they look to applications, they look to modernizing their infrastructure, and ultimately get to virtualization, and then a natural logical step forward is into, is into the cloud, private cloud, and then ultimately embracing public cloud services and hybrid and so forth. It's important for us to remember that customers will find themselves on various points on that maturity curve, and you need to deal with customers in a very specific way depending on where they land on that spectrum. Now, what should a cloud deliver? So if I asked everybody in the audience, give me the definition of a cloud, whether it's the deployment model, the service model, whatever, or define infrastructure as a service, define PaaS, define SaaS, we'd probably get variations of that answer. And we'd ask people, what, is a cloud, should, what, a cl what, what should a cloud deliver? You know, you talk about self-service, flexible resource deployment, 
charge back internet technologies, shared resource pools, et cetera, et cetera. From a Hewlett Packard perspective, we see it being much more from that. Much more as you're trying to address the needs of not only the folks that are moving on the far left-hand side of the spectrum, but the folks that ultimately have reached the destination of a hybrid cloud. And what you see here is, going back to your math, I think it's a hexagon, is beyond those basic characteristics, from a cloud perspective, we think a cloud environment should provide first a unified service delivery paradigm across not only your private, your public, but your traditional IT. Better said, a unified view and the ability to manage all your IT services across your entire IT mix. We think it should support private, public, and hybrid in the same environment and same solution. It should give choice. You'll hear me say that a number of times. You've heard the folks prior to me state that as well. Choice of applications, choice of operating system, choice of hypervisor, choice and flexibility. It should be fully automated, not at the infrastructure level, but from application to infrastructure across the entire life cycle, from initiation to retirement. And finally, it should scale. You'll hear people say, start small, grow tall, and then be built on rock solid security from app to infrastructure. Now, as we, as we look out into the industry today, we see a very fragmented approach to delivering on the basic fundamentals and those six core principles that I talked about on the previous slide. Whether somebody's coming with a virtual only solution, somebody's coming with an appliance that doesn't scale, somebody coming with a proprietary box that's closed, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Our belief, our point of view is beyond choice and flexibility, is that in order to speed the adoption of the cloud and accelerate the exploitation of the cloud, an integrated system approach is needed. Otherwise, and you've probably heard people talk about this before, the problem that exists in today's data center around sprawl or fragmentation, islands of IT, servers, storage, networking, isolated application environments, that problem will just perpetuate until we're no longer here. I'll be long gone and many of you will be as well. And what you'll have is you will have cloud sprawl, which creates incredible uh, complexity, incredible cost, and throttles back innovation. So what we're saying is bring an integrated approach that remains open and flexible to address private, public, and hybrid cloud environments and bring it today and address the entire spectrum of needs. And with that, about three months ago, we introduced something called Cloud System. This is an on-premise, it's a real thing, a combination of hardware, software, and services that delivers an open, integrated system to deliver services across private, public, and hybrid environments. And what it does, and if I give you an example, it provides that unified services view. So you can manage your services traditional, private, and public from the same environment. It's open, multiple hypervisors, multi-OS, heterogeneous infrastructure. As much as I'd like to believe that everybody's gonna buy HP infrastructure, I'm fairly realistic. I'm confident we'll get a big portion, not as confident as the Lakers are gonna win four, but pretty confident that we're going down the right path as the largest IT company in the world and supporting a heterogeneous environment. So if somebody had HP infrastructure, but God forbid they wanted to support our competitors, we will support that in the same environment under a single umbrella. We provide intelligent automation and orchestration, meaning that when you launch a service from cloud system, it will intelligently select where to grab resources based on business policies, performance, cost, compliance. How about Patriot Act, take into account the Patriot Act and make sure that that's factored in to where you're going to grab resources and deploy, including bursting off-premise. Rapid application and infrastructure deployment, doing something that took weeks and months down to minutes. Built on a converged infrastructure of server storage and networking, 
and then taking advantage of all this and providing increased agility for the enterprise, but also for service provider, taking into consideration that they've got problems driving top line growth. And we're doing this by working with key partners top to bottom. From the virtualization platform perspective with Red Hat, moving up into the application realm and focusing a tremendous amount of attention on the app and the service, because at the end of the day, that's all that matters. The infrastructure is there to facilitate service delivery. So this is just a graphical way to show the one button deployment of an app and service, starting with building your service catalog. So in a second, you'll see that we have a slick way of defining services based on best practices, based on templates, based on workflows that will automatically populate your service catalog and provide an automated speedy way to deploy that application along with the related infrastructure. And once you go into that unified service catalog and push go, you'll go through this circle of life to deploy that application and the related infrastructure. And then when you're done with the app, you'll shut it down and return those, serv those resources to the shared pool. So how is this thing consumed? We have three flavors, all utilizing Red Hat technology, cloud system matrix for folks that are looking for a private cloud infrastructure as a service and basic application deployment and monitoring capabilities. As you move up and you mature, you're looking for a more robust private cloud or hybrid environment with robust application lifecycle management capabilities single services view, heterogeneous support. You can burst and bridge out to service providers for, for ex excess capacity. You go with the enterprise version. And that brings to bear a lot of the software assets that we have at Hewlett Packard, which we call cloud service automation. And we fuse that with our blade system matrix or cloud system matrix underlying unified infrastructure. And finally, there's a service provider edition that takes all those goodies I just mentioned and provides the means for a service provider to aggregate all of their SaaS offerings, both those that they develop themselves, as well as those they're procuring or white labeling or reselling from the thousands of resellers or, or application developers that they have there. They can ingest, they can manage, they can price, they can bundle, they can tie into their existing BSS and OSS environments, and then they can settle revenue agreements with their partners at the same time. So we're taking into consideration, once again, deployment model, service model, as well as the maturity of the customer. So cloud maps. So this is the idea of taking knowledge that exists, for instance, between HP and Red Hat and creating a service definition via graphical user interface. I can go drop and drag and say for JBoss, JBoss deployment, this particular scenario, I need these servers, I drag and drop, I need this storage, I need this network connection, I need these software pieces on these boxes, click go, the service definition is created, and that can automatically be imported into cloud system system service catalog, and you have an entry right there in your self-service portal to go deploy that environment with one touch. So we're working with Red Hat on that. We're working with Red Hat as it relates to an Oracle deployment as well. And there's more to come as we go forward here. Now, let's talk for a minute a little more about how Cloud System and, and Red Hat fit together. First, working from the bottom up. KVM and the virtualization platform, absolutely. A fundamental element of HP's Cloud System. Once again, giving customers choice of operating system and hypervisor. We're working from a cloud maps perspective to automate the deployment of applications, middleware, and infrastructure via our cloud map technology that then creates your service catalog. We then have partnerships and activities underway uh, beyond today where we bring together Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization and the management tools with our cloud system management ser uh, services and management tools as well. We're gonna work together to more tightly fuse those together over the next several quarters and over the next 12 to 18 months to create an even more robust and seamless environment within the cloud system family. Once again, choice, flexibility, and we are absolutely committed to open source and remaining open even with an integrated cloud system offering. 
So let's think once again about the maturity of the customer. And what this slide is supposed to depict is the evolution of customers over here that have existing infrastructure, whether it be HP or third party or existing software pieces, and they're gonna wanna move in a stepwise pragmatic fashion to cloud system. So the, what we tell our sales force and what we tell our partners is that the destination is always cloud system. But the path to get there may, may be different depending on where you or your customer or if you're a partner, where you're starting. Important. You're all gonna go on a really neat journey. That road trip may be different, but you're ultimately, everyone is gonna get to that same place, that same destination. Just a little bit about our pedigree. Um, we have been doing the cloud for quite some time, coming from a very mature foundation and position uh, working not only from the deployment of private clouds, and we've got hundreds of these based on cloud system technology already deployed, but also some of the Uber service providers out there basing their cloud environments on cloud system technology, websites, search engines, service providers, as well as social media properties. I won't go into the names, but you can probably fathom a guess. Now finally, and I didn't want to be up here very long presenting to death to you, is that when you step back for a second and you look at the HP strategy, working with partners like Red Hat, you can think about it in four quadrants today. So I talked about what we're doing to help customers build private, public, and hybrid clouds based on cloud system. We also are helping customers consume public services in a secure way. An example of that would be our mission critical infrastructure as a service is offered by our enterprise services organization, which was previously known as EDS. Think about this as super duper SLAs around infrastructure as a service, well beyond the offerings out there today. What enterprise Fortune 500 customers would expect from that type of service and more to come as the quarters roll on. We also have the means to manage and secure heterogeneous environments that don't have HP infrastructure, if that's a requirement, with cloud service automation, which is embedded element of cloud system. But we will go solo without there if customers demand that. And finally, for customers that really haven't mapped out a cloud strategy yet, and there are a lot of them out there that are still confused, as I mentioned, we offer something called the Cloud Discovery Workshop. It's an interesting, it's a day. We bring in a cloud expert and they spend essentially eight to 10 hours dialoguing with large panels in the room with the executive teams at the target customer. This is not the CIO, this is the CIO, the CTO, the CMO, the CFO, the heads of the business units that get together and talk about not only technology and infrastructure, but talk about governance, compliance, ROI and financials, organizational inertia, the number one issue that usually is highlighted during these by all of the C-level executives is the organizational inertia and getting everybody on the same page around business and IT alignment and the value of the cloud to that organization. It's almost, think of it as almost a therapy session for the organization. And they come out with a pragmatic approach to hybrid delivery, traditional, private, and public, and a roadmap that's gonna take them to the cloud. So finally, start now. There's a lot of activities that are going on today. There'll be an HP session on Journey to the Cloud. There'll be a session on Cloud Foundations from Red Hat, the HP edition. Uh, the HP pod is out front, so go take a look. And we also are featuring Vertica, which is the big data analytics solution. Uh, with our re recent purchase of, of Vertica. You can take a look at that. Some exciting stuff we're doing as well. So wanted to thank everybody and the opportunity for being here today. We're super excited about our partnership with Red Hat. Once again, a fundamental element of cloud system, which we think as an integrated approach is the right answer for customers, regardless if they find themselves just starting out and looking to get started, moving beyond virtualization of private cloud, or a customer way over here on the right 
that's looking to get into a robust hybrid environment or a service provider looking to deliver thousands of SaaS applications to their customers. And with that, thank you very much. And I think we may be taking a break, or that may not be my call. <laughs> but I'll, I guess, wish me off. <laughs>